Hello everybody, this is Etho, and welcome back guys to another episode of our modded Minecraft series. <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time, have I? Uh, so how you guys doing today? Uh, I'm so tired today guys, I don't know what's up. I got eight hours of sleep last night, but it feels like I only got four. You ever have, have days like that? I don't know why. I must have had a nightmare or something and I just don't remember it. Crazy, I know. Uh, today, guys, though, I thought we would do a bunch of, like, random projects. I got a few things in mind here. Uh, last episode, I kind of talked about the Ender Pearl woes we were having. We tried to set up uh, automatic Ender Pearl collection, which didn't really work for us. Um, but also, I think I've been doing something wrong with the power generation. Let's do a little test here. I did farm up some more Ender Pearls. So I AFK'd at, our, at the Ender Farm for quite a while. Well, that's going to take a long time to fill up, isn't it? Okay, first Ender Pearl got eaten up. 30,000 exactly. So let's feed it two more. And then we'll check out the thing I'm, I'm curious about here. Okay, so we fed it three Ender Pearls, and that gave us 90,000 RF exactly. We have room for 10,000 more in this internal buffer here. Uh, this is what we're checking out. If we automatically feed it ender pearls from some sort of storage container like this cache here. So let's go ahead and give it a couple more here. I'm going to shut this off quickly and take these out. So it burnt one more here. Is 20,000 of that RF going to go to waste? I think it will. Because it's still burning it. You see the time's still counting down here. Oh. Oh, wait a second. Oh, yeah, it is going in there. Okay, so it's filling this up. Should go up to 100,000, I would think, and 20,000 went to waste, right? Yes. Okay, so you can waste power if this buffer fills up all the way. So we have to do something about that. Okay, here's an idea that I think will work here, and it should work fairly nicely. Uh, I found out if you power an ender generator, it doesn't stop it from consuming more ender pearls or any of these extra utility generators, it doesn't shut them down or anything like that, but you can get a comparator signal out of it, uh, depending on how much uh, energy is in its buffer here. So if this is at zero, this shuts off, and this transfer node only pulls ender pearls out if it's uh, unpowered. So if we break this, it should have, yeah, so now it's starting to pull them out. So as long as there's energy in the ender generator, it's gonna stop it from sending items and then I'm going to put a hyper rationing pipe on here. That allows only one to go in at a time. And then do this. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that'll work. Let's try drain the buffer or drain the energy out of there. Um, okay, inputs. Yeah, so that's receiving the power out of there. So right now it doesn't have any ender pearls. I think as soon as it runs out of power, it should get one. Hopefully, maybe. Yeah, there we go. And as long as uh, as long as your energy cell here is quick enough to pull the energy out faster than it makes it, like right now it's still at zero, even though it's creating power, uh, it should work fine. And then if this stops receiving the energy, this will start to build up. That turns the comparator back on once it gets to a certain point. It's not like right... Yeah, it, it takes a little bit before... It, turns on it seems so now it won't receive any more again until it gets rid of this energy in there so that should prevent uh, me wasting power like I was because over here I was just like pumping ender pearls in constantly so if a thousand energy disappeared from the buffer you know it would burn up an ender pearl and waste 29,000 so yeah <laughs> this should be a lot better and there we go guys so I, I like that that's a much more intelligent way of doing this uh, I just hooked it up to one of these, even though we got four of them here, but they should all shut down at the same time, I would think. Uh, so that's so that's cool. Uh, I made some of these uh, super duper amazing energy cables over here from Ender.io. 20,000 RF per tick. I'm going to switch out these old crummy ones with them, I think, and kind of clean up the look back here. Because um, I noticed something. I was I was trying to make some bricks over here. And my redstone furnace can't even keep up. <laughs> like, this is drained. 
I because I put in uh, eight times speed augmentations in here. Um, but uh, yeah, the current power tables can't keep up, so we're gonna redo that. And I was thinking maybe today, maybe we uh, actually redo the power station. That would be a good project. So instead of having this like power stuff over here, just set up a test rack with uh, energy transfer from the power station. Would set up another test rack there. Um, I think that would be a fun project. So we'll do that instead of just some random stuff today. Check this out. This is one of the most satisfying things ever. <laughs> Isn't that cool? We're going to use that at the steampunk base, I think. So it just uh, takes steam from like a steam boiler. And this is Railcraft, by the way. This is a steam steam trap. There's automatic ones, and then there's manual ones. The manual ones you control with redstone. Connected. All right, there we go, guys. So we got the cables upgraded and uh, cleaned up. They they just go down under the island now instead of all over the place like they were before. Uh, so now let's head over to the industrial part of our world here. The plan is we're redoing the power generation station. So this building over here, we built this a long time ago. Uh, it served us well up to this point. I use it uh, quite often, actually. I usually uh, recharge my jetpack and my tools and sometimes energy cells here, so even to this day I, I use it. But the problem is we then did this <laughs> and we have a clash of themes going on and you guys have decided, as have I, that this has to go, right? Even if we changed out like the gray blocks to the blocks we're using over there, um, it still wouldn't really match the theme. Uh, like the shape of the building is all wrong and stuff too. So we're just gonna redo it uh, I've decided let's rebuild it over here though, and we got a fair bit more space over here, so it should be should be better. And rather than just like burning gas like we were doing over there, this is going to be a bit of a collection of odd power generation things. Like we're going to use the extra utility uh, generators, but also. I want to try to get the diesel generator in this building as well. This thing over here. So otherwise, I don't really have a spot for this. Um, so it'd be cool to get that set up. Um, as far as the building theme goes, <laughs> like uh, I looked online for some inspiration. Like I I searched Minecraft power station, and honestly, I didn't really get much inspiration out of it. So I'm just gonna try to build like a coal coal plant, coal factory sort of look. Um, not that I know what those look like. I'm just going to imagine it and, and build that, I guess. It's probably not going to make much sense. Uh, but most like power stations, if you search, they're like futuristic looking, and we don't want that. We want more factory style. So instead of using these, uh, these bricks here that we were using before, I want to try use red brick. I think those would look pretty nice for like the main wall and, and structural part of the build. We use that, and then on the interior, we might use dark dark oak for like uh, supporting scaffolding and stuff. For the floor, I picked up the sandy brick again. Also, I found out recently the trodden dirt from Botania looks very good with this build. Uh, we didn't have Botania before. Yeah, this stuff over here. This is what I used in the Sky Factory uh, rebuild that I did. I think it turned out pretty nice. So we might use that instead of the sandy brick because it's kind of the same color. And then the treated wood and some other immersive engineering blocks uh, for the theme here. So as far as what we're doing, uh, there is a path over here that kind of goes off to nothing. Maybe we will make that come out to over here. So our entrance, I feel, should be on this side of the building, like around here. Uh, we got the minecart track over there. So maybe for delivering coal or other fuel, ender pearls. Uh, potions, if we set up potion generators, those will arrive by the train there, uh, maybe off on this side. And I want to include some smokestacks and I don't know what else. We'll see. I got to figure out a design for the building here, though. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is the part of the build, guys, where I'm like, well, not really liking how it's looking. <laughs> do I keep going or do I tear it down and start over? I don't know. 
Like, once you start adding details, it can make the world of difference. But I think I might just tear it down and start over. Yeah, so new building here, guys. I decided to tear it down. We're going to start fresh. And we're going to use much, much closer to the style we have over there. Uh, just makes it easier for me, and I think it looks better anyway. So pretty much copied the entrance we had at the other other spot there. I liked this entrance. I think it's cool. And on the inside here, I've been experimenting with something. This might be a weird idea, but I'm trying to build a steam boiler. Okay. So let's see, I was going to put a brick over here. Yes, yes, very nice, very nice. So here's the weird thing about this. Uh, it's like a decorative steam builder, builder, boiler. <laughs> so we got the fire underneath, and the idea is there's supposed to be water in here, and it's making steam that gets uh, put out of the pipes or whatever. The thing is, though, I we need an actual steam boiler, like the Railcraft one. So I put that inside our fake steam boiler. Crazy, right? Fake steam boiler with real steam boiler inside. I don't know. <laughs> so that's that's what we're doing here. Uh, but the problem is I don't really like the look of this block, and it's the best one I've found. Like, it's too clean. It's too clean. I want more of a dirty look, or... You know what I mean? Like, it, we want this to look uh, rustic or whatever. So I brought over some of this aluminum brass. We'll try that. And also, I saw with this futuristic block, we might have a possibility. Oh, and I got, like, the rusted... Rusted iron look. I don't know about that one, though. Let's see. This one. This is what caught my eye. How does this texture look? Whoa. Hmm. See, the big problem is the lines. We might not want these lines in here. Uh, a lot of finicking. Oh, no! No! What, what bag was that? Redstone, rail kit, blocks, cable stuff. That was my tool bag! Ah! That's like all the hard to make tools, probably. What did I have in there that was important? Probably a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, it's gone now. Oh, I think this is going to be the winner. If we do something else, I think this might look the best. The problem is when you get to these wedges here. I knew I was I should have lit the fire afterwards, but I wanted it for the demonstration here, you know. Uh yeah, so that was pretty brutal, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm a bit salty now. I just burnt my tool bag. I don't know what was all in there. I know there were some tinker tools and, and some other stuff for sure. I've started a new tool bag. Uh but the good news is my Thomcraft stuff wasn't in there, so I didn't burn my wand. Uh, also, I had uh, my dark axe on me, my uh, focus pouch. Oh, if I lost this, this is like easily two, three hours wasted. I have to remake all this stuff. Um, not not easy. So I'm glad I didn't lose everything here. Oh, we got another tool to add to the bag. Look at that. We're rebuilding. <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, I've, been, I've carried on here, though. I've been working on the interior look of this place a little bit better. So I enclosed our steam boiler... Uh, with a steam boiler inside. I know, a bit of a paradox. It's crazy. Um, I got a divider over here. And just tried to make this feel kind of cozy. We got like a overhead thing going on here. We might end up doing two stories with this build. I'm not quite sure yet. If we do, there's probably going to be like uh, a walkway in the middle here. And then some other stuff up upstairs here. But uh, next thing we're going to add probably is the diesel generator uh, off in this space over here. And I'll just tell you what I what I noticed here. Um, when you're building, it's always important to consider perspective, right? So when I walked up to the diesel generator here, it's like, oh, yeah, that looks pretty good, right? Like, this is a cool, very cool looking machine. Um, definitely want to feature it and show it off, right, with our build. But I noticed if you look at it from, you know, one, two blocks up, you get a much, much cooler angle. All right. So with that in mind, guys, I decided to put our biodiesel generator down into um, kind of like a semi-basement sort of thing here. It just goes down a couple blocks. Uh, and that way we get the 
what I think is a cooler angle of viewing this uh, from because you got to look slightly downwards now when you when you look at it and also it just helps to create more variety with our building here because now we have layers happening it goes downward um, also I included some brick and stuff in the in the look here for a bit of a color addition and whatnot uh, this helps to create a nice uh, highlight for the machinery here because it separates it from the floor having the the brick ring around here and from like a realistic uh, perspective it helps to make it look like the machinery is being supported like it's a heavy machinery it needed something besides just the normal flooring to uh, handle the weight of it you know I don't know <laughs> then I added some brick on the on the bottom here too just for variety that back wall and stuff looks pretty plain right now I'm gonna try to change that towards the end of the building I think just add some more variety into that but our biodiesel generator needs to run off of biodiesel, right? So we need to supply it with that. So I was thinking in this spot over here, right next to it, let's put our tank for doing that. These blocks are so weird. They don't make any sound when you break them, which really messes with my head. <laughs> or when you walk on them either, I don't think. Yeah, it's, it's totally silent. It's crazy. Uh, so we're going to put an immersive engineering tank over here I would think uh, they look pretty cool so you got to put the fences down there we're gonna go up uh, one extra block with it and then use this sheet metal stuff I realized I lost my builders wand that's one thing so like for building this I gotta do it manually now <laughs> I'm gonna have to remake that uh, I think you go up four blocks with this you gotta leave the center hollow uh, let's try four blocks. See if I remember right. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so then you tap it with a hammer. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So this holds a bunch of biodiesel, and then we can probably put a pipe. Yeah, a pipe right over there to pump it down. Uh, this is where the intake is on it. So that will work out pretty nicely. Can we... Mm, maybe we put brick down here too. Do I still have some? Yeah, I got some on me here. Cool. Alright. And one thing I just realized, I've never used these fluid pipes before, so maybe we will experiment with that a little bit. Uh, I did some reading. Like these pipes over here. I'm not exactly sure how they work. They have a fluid pump, uh, but I've also read you don't necessarily need to use that. So if we put a water barrel next to this, no, it's not pumping the water into here. Okay. Not directly. Maybe... Yeah, I grabbed a liquid note to try this out. Maybe... Oh, if we do that. So that's going to actually pump it, force it into the pipe here, I think. Now is it putting the liquid in? No. Hmm. Hmm. If you don't use the fluid pump, it says it's very slow. But I don't think that's going in at all. Oh, it is. It is. Oh, cool. Okay. So that might be all we need to do then. Um, let's just check out this fluid pump, though. I'm curious. Okay. So it's got power input on the top there. And... Yeah, okay. So input, output on the sides. I see. Okay, guys, so I'm not able to get that entire building done in uh, today's episode, so we're going to break it off into another uh, another one. We'll finish it up, and then maybe for the rest of this one, we're just going to goof around here a little bit. Uh, I've been wondering, how do you use applied energistics with Psalmcraft? Like, I'm sure there's a way of automating the infusion altar here uh, with it. Previously, we were trying to do it with computer craft, and it worked, kind of, but... Long term, I don't think it's a good idea because it's it doesn't have an interface, you know. And I just tried it out here to see if it still works. Like you, you were supposed to be able to type infuse list. I think the program crashed, <laughs> and then it says like all the things it can infuse that it has a recipe for: boots, silver wand. So I tried to infuse boots, and then nothing happened. And now I typed infuse list again. I think the the program crashed. So between updates. Uh, things have changed and now it's broken. So long term, not really the best method probably. 
Is it crashed? Yeah, it is. Okay. So I know there's a mod called Applied... Uh, or what's it called? Thom Thomic Energistics or something? I don't know. Where Thomcraft and Applied Energistics uh, work together very nicely. But how do you do it without that mod? Uh, I know it would make it a lot easier, but I'm kind of wondering how do you do it without it? I'm sure there's a way. Well, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, try out this idea, guys. And if I can't figure it out, I'm sure you'll help me out in the comments, hopefully. Because <laughs> I would like to be able to do this. Um, so I brought over stuff for, like, auto-crafting. I just realized, though, we probably don't need that, do we? Um, so I'm going to hook up an interface terminal, pattern terminal, for making patterns and stuff. Let's say, for example, we want to make uh, Boots of the Traveler, right? That's That's what we were doing before. So it takes these six items, and then it needs to put this leather boots in the middle pedestal here. And then also, oh, it needs the Essentia and stuff too. So it's a little bit complicated. How do you split that up and, and select it all? I'm not really sure. But I know you could like create a pattern for a machine... So you could tell it's like one of the things we need is a feather, one of the things we need is a, a fish, and then you need two fabric. So you do that. I think it's two shards. All right. So if you write that as a, uh oh, oh, do you have to tell it what it makes? Hmm. Okay, I'll take those off <laughs> and put that down here. All right. And I guess we can put leather boots in there. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how to separate them all. So if we do that, oh yeah, it's going to want somewhere for us to tell it. I guess we got to set up a chest down here, right? And then connect it to all the pedestals. Yeah, okay, so I, I did bring some chests. Um, here, we'll put it over here. So we would have to connect an interface up to the chest, and then we could put that pattern in the interface, right? I think. Yeah, so that goes in here. Um, so we connect that to there. And then I'm going to hook up uh, item ducts to all the pedestals. They're right above there. And probably hook them up in a series. So they all kind of go one to the next. Uh, yeah, so I think this should work, right? So as far as I understand, an interface requests ingredients, right? It doesn't really care what those go to but it expects to get these boots in return after sending those ingredients. And then when it gets the boots, then the crafting is complete. So this will send the ingredients into the chest, then those go into the pedestals. But we actually want, like for example, with this recipe, we want the leather boots to go in this middle pedestal over here, not into the side ones. So we could blacklist the leather boots so they can't go into the side ones and then we could whitelist them to only be able to go into the middle here so leather ingredients don't um, that would work as long as like no other thumbcraft thumbcraft recipes require the leather boots as like needing to go into these side pedestals because we wouldn't be able to put them in there anymore um yeah, okay, we'll, we'll try it this way. <laughs> so I'm going to set this up. Uh, enable whitelist the leather boots. So that'll separate them. And then we could do the same for the crystal stuff. So the crystal stuff goes into these furnaces in a series. Uh, let's just try it right now as it is. So we'll put our ingredients into the system. And we can see we got the Thomcraft boost, boots. Boosts? I'm losing it, guys. <laughs> We got them here. Let's try craft them. Oh, it does take a CPU. Oh, really? Even even though we're not using molecular assemblers, I guess it does. Okay, good thing I brought them. So yeah, basically, just for right now, I'll put it over here. Get a crafting monitor so we can see what's what's wrong if it messes up. Okay, do that. Should be connected. Let's try it again. There, so now we have the option to start it. So the only pr other problem with this is that it's going to put the ingredients in a series like this. As far as like bouncing out the bad effects of infusion, you kind of want to space them out evenly across these pedestals. So they're all kind of on one side here, which 
sucks as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that did what we wanted it to do. So for any infusion we do, there's like three things we got to worry about here. There's the item in the middle. There's only going to be one of those. Then we have the side ingredients. There could be lots of those. And then also the Essentia down here. Um, kind of three categories we got to worry about. Uh, there can also be a lot of these. And as far as I know, crafting recipes can only support nine different things. So if we have a complicated recipe, I'm not sure how to deal with that. But uh, as far as doing the Essentia, we're going to do it the same way. These numbers down here, we need 25 Eider and 25 Volatis <laughs> for making these boots. So let's add those onto our recipe here. 25 and 25. So I'm storing my Essentia as crystals here. Each one of these has one in. All right, so we'll rewrite our, our pattern. Put it back into the interface down there. Okay, so then we want to separate out the, the crystals. So much like we did with this other stuff, let's... Oh, where are my pipes? There they are. Let's make a filter. We're going to whitelist the crystals over here. Whitelist, and we want it to be fuzzy, which I always forget which one of these it is does that. <laughs> so it'll accept any kind of crystal. They have the same number, right? 4, 4, 10. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good, good. Use metadata. No. I think that's the one. Or it might be this one. I'm not sure. I'll do both. Okay. And then those are going to go into our furnaces, which will break them down into Essentia again. Um, let's go ahead and just run it across here. Split these so they don't connect. Okay. And then we got to blacklist them on the other filters. How do you... Oh. Because this is on whitelist. I can't also blacklist stuff, can I? <laughs> Darn it. Oh, wait a second. I just had a brain fart. It's all good. <laughs> if it's whitelisted, that means every other item is blacklisted. So it's not going to accept crystals into this uh, middle pedestal. Just leather boots only. Um, so no crystals will go in there. And I got crystals blacklisted here, so they won't go into these ones. Only into our furnaces, which I have found out you cannot connect to from the bottom. That's where the fuel goes. You have to connect to them uh, on the sides. So I set up two furnaces that I connect to from the sides here. All right. So we should be set up to automatically craft these boots for the most part. Let's go ahead and try it again. Yeah, so now it has the crystals in the list as well. Good. Items got added onto the pedestals here. Into the middle, we got the boots. These are receiving the crystals, which are breaking down into Essentia, going into the jars so the infusion altar can use that. The only thing is we have to right click on the. Yeah, that's good. We have to right click on this to start it. Possibly. Can you do it with an autonomous activator? I think this is designed so that you can't. Oh, I actually have one on me. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try it. Um, I, I don't think you're supposed to automate uh, Thomcraft. I think it's designed so that you can't. Um, but we'll, we'll try it. Or at least last I heard anyway. So it's right clicking if we put our wand in there. Don't think it's working. Is this on ignored? Yeah. It's using power, so it's trying to right-click right now with the, the wand, and it's not happening. Do you have to be sneaking? I don't think so. Yeah, so I don't think that's going to work. So you have to right-click on this still. There's no avoiding that. Um, one problem that will happen as well, if something fails during the infusion, the system's not going to know to replace the missing item, for example. Okay, so my game crashed. <laughs> Things have gone bad here. Uh, I got an all pointer exception for some reason. I think we'll, we'll just go ahead and shut this down because something got messed up. Can I, can I not shut it down? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I thought you... 
Don't you just click on it? You have to click on it with your hand. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> so we got a couple problems here. Um, well, darn. What do you do when it, when it doesn't stop? Maybe because the game crashed, it won't let me shut it down now. Whoa! Okay, don't break that during infusion. <laughs> I've never done that before either. That was crazy. Okay. That stopped it, though. Alright, so yeah, we got a couple problems here. If you guys have ideas on how to make this better, let me know in the comments. But in general, it should work. But I would definitely want to uh, add more of these crystals to stabilize infusion a little bit better. And another thing, when it's done crafting or infusing the item, it's not going to get removed from this monitor until it actually receives it in the system. So one thing you could do is add like a, an export bus onto this with the items in the filter here. Add more capacity cards. Um, might work. Not a great way of doing it, but it would work, I think. Uh, but yeah, if you have ideas, let me know. Uh, this episode's running a little bit long, and uh, I think we'll just end it here for today. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.